Well, Jesus, we love you this morning, and uh, it's with great honor and a great privilege that we're able to hang out with you, that we're even able to connect with you, to talk to you right now, the king of the universe, is mind-boggling. And Lord, now we pray that you would speak to us, your kids, your heart, your love letter, illuminate this passage that we're about to study and be our teacher. I pray especially for the heartbroken person in here that is looking for a touch from your word today, a touch from your spirit. Lord, would you work in this place? As always, Lord, be our teacher, be our guide. May I decrease, may you increase, and may all of us in here walk away changed as your spirit teaches your word. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, Saturday mornings at the Dachshund household, we've started a tradition in our family. It's called devotional donuts with daddy. What better way for guys to get together? You know, dad, six-year-old boys, crack open the Bible, go grab some donuts. So we roll over to Sunrise Donuts over there by High V. Some of you guys have been there. And uh, this past Saturday was no different, just yesterday. So we roll in there, and my kids just love it. I mean, I put them to bed every night, and you know, that Friday night, hey, Dad, we going to Triple D in the morning? Yeah, man, I can't wait. We're going to roll that. You're going to get, get some filling of the word and, and the donuts. And here's the cool thing. I, before they touch a donut, they got to be answering questions from the word. And this, you got to be smart about that. You don't give them an enticement. We walk in there, and there's Bla Blaze first. He's right to the, hey, I want, I'd like to have that icing there, the ice bar right there. Vanilla ice bar, please, ma'am. You know, and hooks that up, and then sign on. I'll take the white cream filled Bavarian or whatever. I'll just hooks it up. It's Dad's turn yesterday. I, I didn't. I didn't get my first breakfast. You know, usually I have a first breakfast and then donuts. So I had to go too. As I said, man, I got my original a peanut, a peanut. They already know. They know that I'm going with the peanut. I said, what's that new one there? Cinnamon crunch. Boy, that looks good. Hook that up. A little coffee. Sit down. I, I crack open their little devotional Bible. We find ourselves in Isaiah 55. So we start breaking it. Then we pray, break it down. And the donut's right in front of them. You know, they can't touch it, though, until they, you know, first seek first the kingdom of God. Then the donuts will come after, right? <laughs> and, uh, so we're hanging out. And I'm, you know, I pray. I'm kind of starting to share. You know, I'm reading the passage. And, you know, man's ways are not my ways. My, high, my ways are higher than yours. And they're tuned in. And, but next thing you know... I don't know if you've been to Sunrise, but they got the TV up in the corner. And Nickelodeon is jamming. Hannah Montana, just getting after it. So you got one dude, and, and I purposefully, I'm the one sitting to watch the TV, because I know if I put the kids there, it's, it's, it's curtains, you know? So Blaze is in front of me, back to the TV. I got Zion right here. Zion's locked and loaded. And he's listening to me. Blaze, he's, he's pretty much involved. But next thing you know, here's Blaze. Start doing that number. I said, I said, Blaze, dude, you come on, man, tune in, bro. We're trying to get into the word here, you know? Come on, man. He's like, oh yeah, yeah. And then he's back, he's focused again. Yeah, okay, yeah. <laughs> and then it hit me. God says, There you are. You're Blaze. I said, ooh. Caught that in the ribs, man. He said, that's you, Todd. You see, start connecting with me. Start walking with me. Start enjoying fellowship with me. But then there's something that's always trying to drag your attention away. It's the world. Full, you name it. We live in a culture. <laughs> it's, always, it's always after you. Everything. The messages are out there. The commercial that was, uh, that got us distracted after a while, too, is... It was Hannah Montana, but then it went to commercial. And this commercial, I don't know if you've seen it. Some of you guys probably maybe have this product. But it was, uh, they were promoting a video game for like little girls. And what they do is they get on the video game, I don't know if it's Wii or PlayStation or something, and they go shopping. 
I don't, did, have you seen this? They go shopping and, you know, it's, oh, well, and it has a little person in there and they're, oh, that looks good, that purse looks good, and, and they're getting all their get up and, you know, and, and they show these little girls playing it and going, huh, you know, and they show the screen and I said, golly, it starts early. They don't hold back. The world, distraction, 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 distraction. This week, the title of the message is Don't Be Distracted. How hard do you think it was for me to study this week? Right? Phone's ringing. This is happening. I'm studying. This, this people are coming in. To the, uh, distraction, distraction, distraction. How about yourself? Do you feel that? Do you feel that tug that's trying to draw you away and get you off target of your walk with Christ? Or is it just me? Maybe it's just me. I don't know. You guys got it going on? We find ourselves in 1 Corinthians 7 today. And the first part of 1 Corinthians, what God brought to my heart, to my attention in that passage was don't deprive. We found that right around in verse 5 or so. <laughs> where it said, hey guys, don't deprive your, your spouse of that sexual connection. Both you guys. And if you do, only do it for a season. You can devote yourselves to, to prayer and fasting and then come back together so that Satan won't tempt you because of your lack of self-control. We talked about the importance of, guys, don't deprive your wife of that deep emotional connection they're looking for, that affection they're looking for. Ladies, don't deprive the men of that, that sexual fulfillment that they need in a, in a married relationship. We talked about the tragedy when that doesn't occur. So we said, don't deprive. Then the second section we talked about was what? Don't divorce. And we talked about the stats and we talked about what is going on in today's society and how it breaks God's heart. We looked at what Jesus said. He said, if it doesn't have anything to do with sexual going outside of the marriage, there's no biblical grounds for that. In God's heart, in Malachi 2, it pains his heart. He hates divorce. Why? He's seeking godly offspring. And those kids are the ones that are feeling it. I was one of them. We talked about that. We talked about the grace of God in that, though. And how God wants to work through all situations to glorify himself. And he will do that if you give him a chance. So today, don't get distracted. Before we get into the main section of text there in 1 Corinthians 7, I, I want to start at verse 17. So turn there with me, if you will. 1 Corinthians 7 and 17. I want, to, I want to teach that first section there, 17 through 24, and then we'll get into the main focal point of our message this morning. 1 Corinthians 7 and 17 says this, But as God has distributed to each one, as the Lord has called each one, so let him walk, and so I ordain in all the churches. Was anyone called while circumcised? Let him not become uncircumcised. Was anyone called while uncircumcised? Well, let him not be circumcised. Verse 19, circumcision is nothing and uncircumcision is nothing, but keeping the commandments of God is what matters. Pause right there. What is he saying? He's saying, hey, some of you guys are getting saved. You're coming to Christ and you are Jewish. So you were circumcised. That was one of the signs of the covenant that God gave to Moses when he said, hey, I'm going to bless you, be, make you a father of many nations. And here's going to be the sign of that promise. You're going to be able to circumcise all your males after the eighth day in the foreskin of their flesh. That was a sign. So as a Jew, that was, that was set you apart. So were you saved while you were a Jewish man? Okay, great. Remain in that calling. Were you saved while a Gentile or a non-Jew? You're not circumcised. You don't have that promise uh, connected with, with the way you're circumcised. You're uncircumcised. He said, hey, remain in that calling. You, you came to Jesus like that? You don't have to go out and get circumcised. And he says, it's not about the outward thing. He said, it's about, about doing the will of God, about keeping the commandments of God. That's what matters. A lot of times I'll hear this question presented to me. Man, you don't have like a robe on? You don't, you don't really have a suit and tie? Like, are you a wannabe pastor? Or what are you? What's your deal here? I hear that a lot. Don't you revere God? Don't you have... You can note takers if you want to jot it down. It's 1 Samuel 16 and 7. And it says this. 